In previous lessons, we discussed Wegener and how he collected a lot of data throughout his life to build a case for continental drift. He could never completely convince the scientific community of his idea. After his death, though, new technology and tools came along to add yet more data to his now revised idea. New evidence included seafloor spreading, magnetic striping, the inching along or actual measurement of plate movement, and earthquakes, volcanoes, and mountain patterns. Oh my! Seafloor spreading and magnetism. We have now discovered that at the bottom of the ocean, the seafloor is actually spreading apart at places called mid-ocean ridges. At mid-ocean ridges, these plates pulling apart is forming new crust, with the newest crust being at the center of the mid-ocean ridges. As you move out from these ridges, the rock gets older and older. This is not just a hypothesis for scientists. They have actually taken drilling samples at the ridges and worked their way out and are able to, to date those rocks. Another interesting thing that scientists discovered at the mid-ocean ridges was magnetic striping on the ocean floor. Now these are not normal stripes that you might think of from a visual standpoint like zebras or tigers. We're talking about the magnetic alignment of the rocks. To kind of give a simplified version or somewhat simplified version of this, think of it as having little magnetic particles inside the rock. When that rock is soft and still cooling, those magnetic particles can line up with the magnetic poles of the Earth. We know that over time, the magnetic alignment of the poles has actually flip-flopped. As it has flip-flopped slowly over time, these magnetic particles in the rock have also flip-flopped essentially what, what we call these magnetic stripes. You can see in this animation here the new crust being formed at the mid-ocean ridge. And like a conveyor belt, it's being pushed out to the left and to the right of that mid-ocean ridge. Up here we are able to manipulate the magnetic alignment of the earth. Flipping it, flipping it again, creating these stripes and leaving that at a longer duration creates wider bands of stripes. Flip-flopping it quickly creates thinner stripes. And this is the type of magnetic pattern we see on our ocean floor. Times of thick magnetic stripes and times of thin magnetic stripes. The crust is broken the crust or lithosphere is broken into seven major pieces, what we call lithospheric plates. These plates are slowly moving in many directions. There are actually many more than seven, but these are just the big ones. Lithospheric plates move slowly over the planet, only a few centimeters per year. Not all plates move at the same speed, but scientists are actually able to measure these with very precise instruments now. It doesn't sound like much. For example, another, another way to think about this might be the growth of your fingernails or the growth of your hair. They're growing every day, but you don't notice it until many days or weeks. It doesn't seem like a, a lot, but after many weeks or days, those fingernails and hair can get quite long. Now imagine letting your nails or hair grow for a year. How about 10 years, 100 years, a million years, 200 million years? Over time, those inches are really going to add up. These plates, as they're moving around, interact with each other at what are called boundaries. These edges are called plate boundaries. Although there can be different combinations of plate movement, we can kind of we can kind of classify them into three basic motions. They're either separating, converging, or sliding past each other. We'll take a closer look at these in the next slide. Converge, diverge, or transform. This website here I, we've taken a look at before, Interactive's Dynamic Earth. It says both of these pictures are of the Earth. Click on the one that looks 
more like the Earth today. And then it says, how do we know this? And here it gives us some more information about Wegener and how the continents moved over time. And there's even a game to go along with it. At this website, geology.com, there's a Google map that lets you in interact and zoom in looking at these different plate boundaries. You can move around and zoom to different parts around the world. Ancient convergent plate boundaries, the Appalachian Mountain Range, fold belt of the Appalachian Mountain Range, and again you can zoom in farther but from this bigger viewpoint you can see some of these folds. Here we've got another animation of seafloor spreading and we can add in some of these different labels. Here's a transform fault going side to side called a fracture fault, the mid-ocean ridge. Geologic events and plate motion. Earthquakes form when plate boundaries move against each other. Volcanoes and mountains also result from these plate motions. Most of these events happen along plate boundaries.